Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. Every circuits textbook that I am aware of says that you can't deactivate dependent sources when using the superposition technique. That's not true. I've already done a couple of videos showing example problems from Alexander and Sudiku's textbook, third edition. And here I would like to do another one using superposition with dependent sources. Here I'm going to look at example 4.7 from page 138 of Alexander and Sudiku, third edition. So the problem asks us to find a voltage Vx across a 2 ohm resistor. On one side of the resistor, we have another 2 ohm resistor and a 6 volt voltage source. On the other side of the resistor, we have an 18 volt voltage source. And then in parallel, we have a 4 ohm resistor and a current source going towards the left. That's a voltage controlled current source. 0.25 VX. I probably smushed this all up a little too closely. So if I wanted to be picky, I should write the units amp over volt for this 0.25. Oh, and I should indicate that the voltage is measured like thus. Now the example in Alexander and Sudiku involves finding VX using source transformation. Here I'm going to solve the problem using Marshall Leach's technique of superposition with dependent sources. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the voltage or current sources in turn, deactivating the others. To begin with, I'm going to focus on the 6 volt source. So this is going to involve opening up this current source and shorting this voltage source. So in that situation, I'll have a 6 volt source here. And then I have 2 ohms. And then with the 18 volt source shorted and the current source open, I wind up with my 2 ohms sitting here. And then I have 4 ohm sitting here like thus. And now I'm looking for the voltage Vx here across this 2 ohm resistor. And that's the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. And really I have a parallel combination. So I could rewrite this as a 6 volt source with a 2 ohm resistance. And then my resistor here, let's see, I'll have 2 times 4 over 2 plus 4. So that's 8 over 6. So I'll write that as 4 over 3. And then in terms of the voltage across this combined resistor here, well, I'll have 6 volts. I'll have a voltage divider with 4 thirds ohm in the numerator. Then I'll have 2 plus 4 thirds ohm in the denominator. Oh, this is kind of annoying. Let me write this as 6 volt times 4 over 6 plus 4. So let's see, that's 6 volt, and that'll be 4 over 10 which is 2 over 5, so this would be 12 over 5 volt. And actually, let me write the result up here. I'll write Vx with a little 1 superscript as 12 over 5 volt. All right, so next in line, let's look at this 18 volt source. When we do that, we're going to open up this current source and we're going to short the 6 volt source. Okay, so I'll have my 18 volt source here. We'll have 4 ohms sitting here. And then we essentially have two 2 ohm resistors in parallel. So this set of resistors here can be simplified to a 1 ohm resistance. And we're measuring the voltage here. So here, Vx is going to be equal to 18 volt, and my voltage divider is just going to be 1 over 1 plus 4, so that's 5. So this is just 18 over 5 volts. Let me again put a little 2 here, and let me rewrite it up here because I'm going to erase this shortly. I'm putting this little superscript 2 here to remind me that this is the voltage we get from this second circuit. Okay, everything I've done so far is relatively standard. What's a little strange is what I'm about to do with this controlled voltage source. 
Let's take a look at it. If I were to deactivate the other sources, I would short them out. Okay, so I'll have a controlled source here. That's 0.25 VX. This is a current source. And then I have my four ohm resistor up here. And then these two ohm resistors will combine to give me a one ohm resistor. And when I look at this here, well, I have a current source driving two resistors in parallel. And so the voltage across this one ohm resistor VX is the same as the voltage across four ohms. So I can basically say that my voltage here is going to be equal to this 0.25 VX. And remember, this here is a current times the resistance according to Ohm's law. And this parallel combination is going to give me four times one in the numerator and four plus one in the denominator, which is five. And let's see, the 0.25 and the four disappear. So this is just VX over five. Notice I put this superscript three here to tell me that this is associated with the contribution to VX from this controlled voltage source. But notice I'm not putting a superscript three on the right-hand side because what's on the right-hand side represents the voltage VX associated with all of the contributions added up together. The reason most people don't think this works is essentially they imagine putting threes here and they'll look at something like this and say, well, this will tell me that VX must be zero and that doesn't make any sense, so this method doesn't work. The mistake they're making is they're trying to solve for VX without including all of the contributions. Now, the business of putting these superscripts here, that's not something Marshall Leach does in his papers on the topic. This is just something I like to do to help keep track of things. All right, so with this in mind, let's actually figure out what VX actually is. So I'll say that VX is equal to VX superscript one, which is 12 over five volts, plus VX2, which is 18 over five volts, plus VX3, which is VX over five. And again, notice that I've put off finding VX explicitly until I've got all the contributions included. Okay, let's see. Let me multiply both sides of the equation by five. So I'll write five VX is equal to 12 plus 18 is 30 plus VX, I can write VX is equal to 30 over four, because if I move this VX over, I'll wind up with four VX. I guess to be technical, I should put a V here. So this is equal to 30 over four volts, or I could write this as 15 over two volt. And if you look in the book by Alexander and Sudiku, this is the same answer that they get using source transformation techniques. Let's see, I guess you could also call this 7.5 volt if you wanted. 